my name is David Young. Um, I typically am doing stuff about drones, so that's been kind of my field, if you will, for the last five years or so. Um, I started an online course school called Drone Launch Academy, and I'll show you all that a little bit uh, later in uh, this presentation, walk you through it a little bit. But we're not here to talk about drones today. What I'm here today to talk to you about is how I built Drone Launch Academy. Um, over the last few years, I've been asked a lot about how to build online courses and what people should do, marketing, what if I'm not good at this? And I know um, a common struggle people feel is they feel unqualified to teach something or they're like, hey, listen, I don't have some type of super knowledgeable uh, area or you know, some area that I'm super knowledgeable in, some type of expertise, but I'm interested in building some you know, passive income online. So I had that same problem. Uh, and again, I'll get, I'll get into more details later. I had the same problem where I started a, uh, a, a platform about drones and I had never touched a drone and even to this day I'm not really considered an expert in drones of course I've absorbed a lot of knowledge as I've gone but I don't I don't have expertise in a lot of the things our schools teach about and I'll show you how I get around that and how I'm still able to build a business and how I was able to build it to a, a seven-figure business um, in the last few years. So I'm excited to dive into that the main thing I'm gonna do you know as we go through today I'm kind of the let me talk walk you through the flow I figured it's easier to take you in sort of chronological order of my journey started back in 2016 and I'm going to talk through some challenges that I had and I think they're probably fairly common to all new course creators, people building an online business, talk about how I got over those challenges, things that helped me along the way and a framework that I kind of came up with, I tried to put some initials to it so you could remember it, um, called the NID framework that I use and it allows me to create an online course platform without ever me specifically being the expert or the one who has to teach. And it, that might sound confusing, um, and I'll explain it, and I think it'll make more sense. Uh, but it's just an alternative option. Like if you are the expert and you know how to do everything else, great, maybe it's one less thing you have to get a partner on. Uh, but the problem with that is it limits a lot of people. They think, oh, I can only teach in areas where I already have expertise or I already know. And that narrows the scope of what they think they can do and the options they have for building an online business. And that's really not true. You can pick any niche you're interested in and build an online course business in it without becoming an expert. And we're going to dive into that. But that's where I'm going to take you. I'm going to take you chronologically through 2016. We'll speed up. We'll get to today. I'm going to share with you my revenue numbers every year, my profit numbers everywhere. I like to be transparent. Um, I hate when people just kind of are vague. You know, I want to be able to inspire you to know what's possible, talk about my challenges, how I um, got over them. And we also have a free course for you at the end that I am putting together right now. And we'll talk about that more in a minute. I'm going to try to look at some of these um, develop classes, design two courses, course people. Cool. Um, okay, so let's journey back to uh, 2016, right? Uh, I was, I, I used to be an accountant. I'm a CPA, or I was a CPA. Used to be an accountant. I was working for the FBI. I got recruited by the FBI out of college. I did stuff for them uh, internally around like financial planning, a lot of Excel all day. Then I went and became a forensic accountant and was doing that for a while. And you would probably think, oh man, this guy's gonna make a course on you know forensic accounting or working with the FBI, right? Because that was my expertise. That was my niche. Um, but that's not what happened. So uh, while I was at the FBI, a, f a friend of mine that was on my team, he's a former army guy, he was talking to me about drones. And he's like, oh man, did you see this was a cool like racing drone thing? I'm like that was really interesting. And I started looking at it a little bit and I noticed somewhere that it said you had to have a pilot's license in order to fly drones commercially, like for money on the side. And I was always kind of entrepreneurial, trying to do little side hustles here and there. I had done some little accounting gigs kind of on the side because as you can imagine, the government does not pay super well. And I was married, I had a few kids. My wife was a nurse and she was working less and less. I don't know if you guys know this, but the more and more kids you have, the harder and harder it is for both spouses to work and keep money because you either have to pay for childcare or somebody's got to stay home and you need a bigger house. So we had all that going on. Uh, we lived in the Washington DC area, so it was also expensive to live. So this is kind of what I was dealing with. I'd always done some side gigs because I thought it was fun. Uh, and then I saw this thing about, ooh, we can fly drones for money. It was new, it was like 2015. I thought, that sounds cool. Let me check that out. I actually had my pilot's license. So when I was a kid, well, I'm not gonna go super deep into it. When I was a kid, I wanted to be a pilot. My first year of college, I went to school uh, to be a pilot, to like be a commercial pilot. Realized I was terrified of flying planes, claustrophobic, 
didn't like being in there, thought I was going to die all the time. I was like, you know what? This ain't for me. Uh, I got my pilot's license and then bailed out the next year. Never flew a plane again. Never touched it. Just walked away. And that was like 10 years, 15 years prior. Okay. So I was like, well, I still got a pilot's license. Technically, it's still active. Um, so I could do this. So I started looking into it. I, I found out that there was a big lengthy paperwork process you had to go through in order to fly drones commercially even if you had the pilot's license you had to like create this document from scratch it was a big pain in the butt uh, so i so i noticed there were a few businesses that were like helping people with this paperwork process and i thought you know what i bet i could do that and i've been a long time uh, follower of pat flynn and we'll talk more about him later pat flynn he runs smartpassiveincome.com i had listened to his podcast before i found it always found it like super inspiring uh yeah yeah, or yeah, that's teachable. Yeah, I always found it super inspiring. I was like, oh man, this is great. I need to figure out how to make some passive income. Uh, and I was like, I gotta, I gotta figure this out. I used to listen to this podcast all the time, or some, you know, internet income. Um, and so I, uh, I was like, you know, what? I'm gonna throw a Squarespace site together real quick. I'm gonna throw a form up. I'm just gonna collect some information. I'm gonna plug it into my template and that I know works because I had already spent time developing. I'm gonna submit it to the FAA and I'll manage that process for people. Well, I did that. I threw. A a couple Google ads up, and it was just right place, right time. I started making a lot of money filing paperwork for people with the FAA. So fast forward three months, I made probably like 20 or 30 grand doing that. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. I was making more money doing that than I was, at work, was working at the FBI. Uh, and then the FAA is like, oh, we're changing it. Um, you actually now have to take a standardized test at a testing center if you want to uh, fly drones commercially. We're gonna have our own like pilot's license for drones and all that stuff. You don't need this paperwork process anymore. And I'm like, oh, fantastic. Well, that kind of sucks because that was my entire business model. Um, so I was like, all right, I need to pivot. Time to get into the online course game. I'm gonna make an online course uh, about this test, right? I didn't know anything about it, right? Still, the only thing I had done is I've flown, I think my dad got me a toy helicopter for Christmas, and that was my experience flying drones, and I had gotten my private pilot's license, not even a commercial or anything, I just passed my private pilot's license test like 15 years prior. That was it, that was my only expertise in the, in the area, in the niche was uh, flying a toy helicopter and having been a uh, pilot, I had the bare minimum hours, flight hours you needed to get a pilot's license, and that's it. I flew one time after I got my pilot's license, never touched the plane again. So it wasn't like I was this pro pilot guy. So I was like, all right, let's do this. I had no idea what I was doing. I was like Googling stuff. I was trying to figure out what course platform to put it on. I didn't even know what a course platform was. I went to like Upwork and was like, hey, can somebody help me build this online course? And I got a bunch of these people being like, I can build you out like a PowerPoint course and it's going to cost like 50 grand. And I'm like, no, this is not what I'm looking for. I couldn't figure out what exactly I was looking for and trying to do. And honestly, this is actually when I stumbled across Teachable. This was 2016. And I was like, oh, this looks like what I could use. And I realized you like put videos up. So I started kind of figuring it out. And then my problems were, I don't have any credibility in this space, right? I'm not, I'm not anybody, right? So I could try to make this course, this like prep course, but like who's gonna take it? You know, is it gonna work? I don't know. I just knew there's a lot of demand kind of in this area, it was a growing area. Well, um, this is where my NID framework comes into play. So let me tell you what NID uh, stands for. I was gonna try to have my iPad here so I could write on it, but uh, StreamYard did not love the iPad, so. Uh, I'll just write it down here. So N, if you guys want to write this down, N is for network. I is for instruction. Instruct. I can't spell. It's a good thing you can't see me. Instructional design, like course creation, right? These are the things you need to be good at if you're not the expert. And we'll, we'll dive into all these. And D is distribution. And that encompasses a lot of stuff. Distribution. All right. I got my nice little drone launch notepad here. I hope you can see that. N for network, I for instructional design, D for distribution. I'll hold that up later again. So this is where it comes into play. I was like, I don't have any credibility. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how this works. I got some documents so I could figure out how to like put the course together, what they were gonna test on. But I was at a drone conference. Uh, I somewhat, a drone conference was coming to DC. I was like, I'm gonna sign up for this. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna try to see what's there. I network with a few people. I just happened to meet an Air Force Colonel who used to be in charge of all weather operations at the Pentagon for the entire Air Force, weather operations. Uh, he was trying to get into the drone space. I ran into an attorney. Um, he was also a partner in his law firm and he was doing drone stuff. I was terrified of both of these guys. They're both like top of their career, really polished, put together. 
I was like mid twenties, you know, worked for the government, knew nothing about drones, and I'm there like, oh yeah, I'm gonna start this company called Drone Launch, um, and I had nothing, you know. So I was trying to be brave, you know. I get out there, I'm networking with them. Uh, I somehow say to them, I said, listen, I want to make this prep course. I would love to have your name in it, right? Um, this is after I got to, I didn't lead with this, but I started, you know, I got to know them, got their contact information. And I remember typing this email out and I just laid it out for them. Hey, listen, because I didn't really have much money to pay them either. I was like, listen, I will try to write all the content. I'll try to do all the heavy lifting. If I can just like have you read the scripts, like proof freedom to like check off that, yes, I agree with that. This is correct, right? And this is what I would say. This is kind of like, you know, what I would kind of, they, they can edit it and modify it, you know, since they're the experts. Um, if you'll do these scripts and, uh, you know, you'll be on camera for me, I will, uh, I will uh, put you all over our website, give you as much free publicity as I can. And I'm trying to think about like, what's in it for them? Well, they're trying to get established in the drone space. I can at least try to give them some, you know, like, oh, I'm an instructor in a course right, because everything was kind of new. So they both said yes, miraculously. I like sent the email like praying like, oh, please God, let them say yes. And they both were like, sure, that sounds good. So I had to do the heavy lifting of trying to put it all together. I'm like researching stuff online like crazy, trying to find different FAA publications. Well, I get kind of like a rough outline and kind of some rough content together. We film it. I think it's pretty decent. Uh, oh yeah, during this time, I was like, I tried to boost my credibility a little bit. So I went and passed some tests, some uh, FAA ground certified ground instructor test. Uh, I, bought a, I bought a prep course, I studied for it. I took that test, I barely passed, just so I could slap that on my name to like, again, be a little bit more credible. Uh, but again, that was had nothing to do with drones. It was just about like actual pilot stuff. Um, so, so I get that. And we teach this course. I spend six months filming it in my basement. I buy camera equipment. I went all out. I paid money to have like uh, motion graphic designers. Uh, I did a bunch of stuff, right? I, I gave these guys, I gave one of them a $200 gift card to a restaurant as a thank you. And the other guy, I ran out of money. So I couldn't give him anything except like a challenge coin I had, had bought for drone launch, which was probably a dumb purchase. So I do all this. Um, I'm trying to get this course edited. We're about to move to Florida from Washington, D.C., because Florida's where all my family's from. I'm like, I'm never gonna finish this thing. Like, recording videos take so long. I'm bad at editing. I found somebody to do the editing, but then I'm like paying him. And then I kind of like ran out of money. Um, and I'm like, crap, I got no money left. So I just didn't shoot the, the last couple videos. And this test was being released soon. And I really wanted to try to get it, um, I really wanna try to get it out there uh, as soon as the test was released. So there was another guy in the space who was doing stuff. He launched a similar course around the same time. And he had a bunch of people sign up for his. He was selling it for like $300 a pop and he had a thousand people sign up. And I was like, holy crap, this guy just made $300,000. I'm like, I'm gonna launch mine and I'm gonna be a bazillionaire. I, th I, li I for real thought this. I gave away a drone in order to get an email list together. So I gave away a drone, I got an email list and of like 5,000 people, apparently 1,000 of them were like spam accounts, so I really had 4,000 real people. I was like, here's my plan. I'm gonna get an email list. I got 4,000 people on here. I'm gonna email them, half of them are gonna open. I don't know, if you, do you guys have any experience with uh, email lists and emailing, email marketing? Tell me in the chat, because you'll know that that is an absolutely ridiculous number that will never happen, for the most part. Uh, I'm gonna, these guys don't know who I am. I've never emailed them before, but I'm gonna email them. 50% of the people are gonna open and 50% of the people are gonna buy. So that's gonna be my 1,000 you know, sales and I'm gonna be crushing it, right? So I go, I draft up my email. Some guy that was uh, knew about what I was doing, he had a little bit more knowledge than me in marketing. He's like, David, I don't know if I would just like hit him trying to sell him something like on the very first email uh, because I don't, they don't know who you are and all this stuff. And I'm like, nah, it's fine, it's fine. Um, so I um, so I send out this email uh, basically saying, hey, here's who I am, here's this prep course, buy my prep course. And that's about it, and it was pretty short. And I thought, all right, here we go. I remember sending the email, going to work uh, at the FBI in Lake, there's like a little really tiny FBI office in Lakeland that I was still working at. And I was just waiting for that cash register to ring, man. I was just letting it, I was like, here we go, guys, it's gonna roll in, I remember like, texting my friend, just sent the email, man, I'm gonna, I'm about to be rich. And uh, absolutely nothing happened. Like if I could do the cricket noise right now, or like the wah, 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 I would do that. It was, it was a, a disaster. Nobody bought anything. I think I made two sales, like one, two, two sales. 
and it was for $99 each. So I had spent probably twenty dollars to $30,000 developing this course, and I launched it, and it was like two sales for $99 each. And I was like super demoralized. I was probably depressed for like two months, or two weeks maybe, two or three weeks. I was like, oh, I was so bummed. I was like, what, what do I need to do? And I was like, all right, I need to learn how to do branding, how to do marketing. I felt like the course was pretty good. And this is when I realized, and again, if you're gonna write stuff down or write this down, you can have incredible content, right? I had good experts, I had good content, I felt like it was really good, but if you don't have the other stuff, so we're talking about NID, right? You need a network, so I got the network, got the people to, to do it for me, like to appear in it for me with credibility. Instructional design course creation, the course was fairly easy to put together order-wise and outcomes-wise because it's just helping them pass a test, so I already kind of had an outline. That becomes a lot more difficult when you're designing a course uh, with kind of an undefined goal, right? You're not helping them pass a test, but you're helping them achieve some other objective. And then D's distribution. That's like your marketing, like your your distribution channels, how you're going to sell it, like marketing distribution. And that's where I sucked. That's where I had no experience. Um, I did terrible. So I was like, what do I do? I was really bummed. I started, you know, trying to think of all these different options, all these different angles I could take, who would buy it. And I felt at the time, like, I was just like, I just don't have anybody to go to who knows anything about like, I mean, I could listen to podcasts, but I don't have anybody to go to and say, hey, here's what I'm doing. What do you think? Like, why is this not working? Or what do I need to be doing differently? Uh, I just had no, no like person I could lean on for wisdom. Like I had my wife, but she's not, she doesn't know anything. She was a nurse. She doesn't know anything about marketing and, and internet sales and courses and all that stuff. Um, so I just felt like, you know, I'm willing to work hard. I just want somebody who's going to come tell me every day, David, today with your two hours of free time or whatever, do these things, right? And you'll be successful. That's all I wanted. Um, but I just didn't have that. I don't know. Does anybody else that's building online courses feel that way? Like you just want someone to be able to tell you what to do, right? Like, I don't know exactly what to do. I'm willing to do the work. I just want to know like what I need to do to get it to work. So I was Googling like online, online business coaches. Um, and I was wanting like coaches for business, like online business. Anyways, I was Googling, I found, I was Googling on a couple different places and I found this, um, I, yeah, see, so people are saying they felt like that. So I found this like coaching group. It wasn't specific to like online courses, but I had a conversation with the woman who runs it. She's like, yeah, we put you in groups of like five or six people. You meet weekly, you know, you kind of keep each other accountable for your goals, sounding board, all that stuff. I was like, oh, this is great. So I joined that group. We met online once a week. Um, and again, it wasn't necessarily online course focused or anything, but it was a huge help. It helped me just navigate stuff, right? Like someone would come to me and say like, oh, hey, we should do this partnership. And I'm like, oh, I need this big legal document drafted up. And she could be like, no, I don't think you need that. Like you just do this, right? Just someone who is further ahead of me to get help guide me. So that was crucial during that time to have like a group of people and just someone who's a little bit further ahead of me in business to help like pull me along. So I did that for about a year. That was 2017, right? And uh, I got some numbers here, right? So 2017, I started doing some stuff. Actually through that group, I got connected with someone who was really good at paid advertising. I was trying to figure some stuff out. I started doing some paid advertising on Google. It was working really well for a while. I started making money. I'm like, sweet. And then it all like broke and I couldn't figure out how to fix it. And I was like, gosh, I'm at the end of my, but luckily through this group, again, had a good network um, that she hooked me up with, oh, hey, you should check out this other member. He's a guy who does a lot of like paid advertising, um, Facebook, Google ads, all that stuff. And I linked up with him. He still runs my paid ads till today. He's great. So that first year, just from that group, I was able to like push through going from like the same course at like basically zero sales. Uh, I launched it in 2016. I think I finished 2016 with maybe like a few thousand dollars in sales, really trying to hustle affiliates and some other stuff. And then the next year we had $250,000 in sales and $83,000 in profit. That was 2017. I cr credit a large portion of that to that group. I was in. Then 2018, right? 2018, um, I see Pat Flynn. Right? Again, I'm still following Pat Flynn. Um, he's launching a uh, mastermind group, the SPI Accelerator. And I'm like, oh man, I gotta get in this. I quit my job in April of 2018, right? So I was making just enough money and I had saved enough. Where I was like, I'm gonna quit my job, let's do this. I quit my job, uh, very nerve wracking. I apply to Pat Flynn's Accelerator group. Um, like ecstatic that I get accepted. It was like me and like uh, 10 or 12 other people. I was like, sweet. Um, 
but it was like a pretty large portion of like the money I was making at the time. But I was so convinced, like, man, if anybody can help me, I know Pat can help me. Um, Cause you're like, if somebody's done this before, it's so much easier for them. They can see things you can't see. And I'll be in this group with other people again. So I'm like big on, on that. So I joined that group. I'm still trying to build. I, again, I had only had one course this whole time for like two years, just focusing on that. Cause it was like a side hustle. Um, we added another course because somebody I had met through actually this guy, one of the guys who did a lot of the video editing for my first course. Uh, we were talking, he happened to be a Hollywood editor. He was getting into drones. And so I was like, hey, a lot of people are asking me like, what do I do now that I have my license? I wanna learn how to do like aerial footage and things. And so uh, we talked and was like, hey, why don't you put a course together? Again, network. So I, I didn't teach the course. I identified, hey, I've got a small audience. Here's what people are wanting. Um, I'm gonna figure out how to make that happen. And so he had never built a course before and he didn't really done advertising before. And I said, listen, I've got the audience, the more distribution now, I've got to know how to do that stuff. Um, I'll help you put the course together. I can do the copywriting. I can do all that stuff because I've been really working on myself and trying. And he's like, okay, sounds good. So we worked together. So like teamed up expert and then that's in the instructional design, knowing how to take someone's expertise and extract it and structure it into a course that is easily digestible. And then someone can go through and be like, oh, wow, this was an awesome course. Because being an expert in something is tip. And I get more into this in my free course that I have, but being an expert in something does not mean you're a good teacher. Usually the people who are the best in a topic are horrible teachers, um, but they have a lot of good knowledge that if with the right direction, they could package that into a nice course. But it takes a lot of coaxing, having worked with a lot of experts. Some are great communicators, some are not. So you really depends on, on where it is there. So I launched another course. The, that course did horribly, uh, like a really high refund rate. People were not happy with it. So I had to be like, hey, listen, we got to go back to the drawing board. So we scrapped that course. Um, got some feedback, uh, expanded the course, redid it all, and now that one's like our second highest selling course ever. Um, I think, I think total for Drone Launch Academy, we've done a little over four point five million dollars in revenue over the life of the school, and that one's done over a million. That that next one we added, right? So, um, so yes, yeah, so we did that. Uh, I joined Pat Flynn's group transformative experience getting in there with 10 other people i'm getting in there i can be like hey here's what's happening i don't know why this is working or this isn't working and there's people in there who are good at seo they're good at you know oh you should pre-sell the course i'm like i should pre-sell it what's this about and so the next course i did i ended up linking up with another guy who i ran into on facebook we kind of hit off a friendship he did roof inspections and solar stuff with drones i said hey let's make a course together i'm getting better at this linking up with people making course thing he said sounds good so he was in San Diego, so we go to San Diego, and from that my group with, with Pat, um, there was somebody else in there, and they are like, hey, you should pre-launch it, and they showed me how to do that. So I pre-sold this course. We sold you know, tens of thousands of dollars worth of courses before we'd ever even made at all. So uh, that was a bit of a strategy to kind of like teach it live and then go back, and um, or we actually launched it week by week after we had filmed it. So um, that gives you some budget to be able to put things together, which is nice. So, so I learned some of those lessons, um, I did that year with Pat Flynn. I have some pictures later that I'll show you. That was fun. Uh, went to you know his conference and just got to know a lot of really great people, really great networking. And it was, it really, every time I joined some of these groups and I try to level up, um, I, I will say I, it, it changed it changed my life to be able to like do a lot of this stuff. You know, I was working hard, reading books, taking courses on my own, doing that stuff. But it's hard to substitute somebody who can just like say, here's what I've done or here's how I do it. And you know, you're just like, oh, and they just, you're able to just like know what to do. It's like the shortcut, right? So I do that it was a one year program. Uh, it was awesome, it ended in 2019. Uh, 2019 was good. We're still launching, see 2019, we did $950,000, uh, or sorry, 2018, we did $550,000 in revenue and was able to pull in, and this is for my tax return. So, you know, you're writing some stuff off. So the actual profit number is probably a little higher, um, but I'm able to write off things like all my computer equipment and some software and stuff. So my revenue, my profit in 2018 was like 120, which is, hey, it's great. I'm living off that, feeding my family. 2019, again, Pat Flynn's group, crushing it. Uh, I got to 950,000. I wanted to crack a million, but I was so close. 950,000 in revenue and then about 200 grand in profit. And that is like twice what I ever made at the FBI. I'm like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe this is possible. So um, so that was awesome. I was in Pat Flynn's group and then uh, that was over. I ended up joining uh, another mastermind group after that one, uh, like coaching group, which was good, but that one was like 30 people. It was really hard to like develop relationships in that same kind of bond and direction. But I did get a lot of good 
direction from the person who was like leading the group. I had a couple issues with partners and stuff that came up and um, he was able to walk me through that and a little bit kind of bring some external wisdom in. Um, so that was really helpful. But we were launching more courses. So at this time we had, and I'm gonna pull up my, uh, I'm gonna pull up my screen. I'm gonna go to Drone Launch Academy and show you guys what we've got here. Um, so you can kind of visualize it, right? I'm gonna go to our courses page. So here's our courses, right? So I've got this prep course, which is our main course. Um, I'll get to that in a minute. Drone Business Masters when we added. So Aerial Video A to Z is the one we launched in 2019. This is an Aerial Roof Inspection Pro. Launched that also, or sorry, Aerial Video A to Z 2018. This one we launched in 2019. Uh, that's a brand new one, brand new one. Um, we've got, actually, you know, I need to go back here. Here's courses. So we've got uh, the Roof Inspection Pro is what was launched. And then in 2020, uh, we launched this Drone Business Mastery, originally called it Drone to 1K. But Drone Business Mastery, where a lot of people were wanting to start their own drone service businesses. So we have this course, which is basically a culmination of other courses. Um, you know, sorry, long sales page. Okay, so it's basically these five courses put into one program. So this was 2020, we're making a lot of courses. But look how many other people teach in this course. Let me just go down here, sorry, these are all testimonials. All right. So I teach a little bit of it, like stuff that I already knew. I'm like, hey, listen, here's how to build a website or here's some basic stuff. Like I did, a, I, I was always the host. So it was almost like, uh, it was almost like a panel course, right? But I went and I had started a podcast and I had networked with other successful drone business owners. And so after I did that, now I had a little bit of a friendship with them. And I said, hey, listen, I'm gonna teach this course. Would you be willing to contribute to it? And they're like, sure. So then I get this guy, he's a six figure drone business owner. Um, this was an SEO person I knew. Um, this was my tax accountant, another drone business owner another drone business owner that they all specialize in something different and they're all talking about here's how i built my business here's how i get sales this guy works for a uh, insurance company he agreed to come on and talk all about drone insurance this was dan Hindley. he's my um, google ads guy he was, created a whole module on google ads for drone businesses so as you can see like the majority of this was taught by other people i was able to again leverage that network leverage knowing how to put courses together and having the audience to where i could um, you know, bring them in. And of course I paid them and they got, depending on what, um, what type of involvement they have depends on how much they get paid and how that is structured. You know, I'll go into more in that free course. Um, but through that in 2020, we were able to hit about $1.2 million in revenue and $300,000, uh, approximately, I'm kind of rounding here in, in profit. And again, I'm like, this is great. So we're still going, you know, 20 in, in 2021, Again, revenue's even higher. I think we hit about, I'm still finishing up all my precise numbers, but um, hit about $400,000 uh, in profit uh, last year. So all this, and, and again, I'm still in, so I finished that one coaching program. I joined like a local um, Vistage group, which was helpful. Again, not so much for online courses, but you just, when you're around people and you're bouncing ideas around, there was a, gr a someone in that group um, they ran a fitness studio and they're like, David, are you gonna run a Black Friday sale? And I'm like, no, I don't Black Friday sale. I'm gonna do drone courses. Nobody's buying drone courses for Black Friday. She's like, you should really run a Black Friday sale. I'm like, that's stupid. And I'm like, whatever. So I did it and we made a bunch of money. I think, I think we ended up bringing in a few extra that year. I'm trying to remember the exact how much it was. It was at least 10, 10 to 20 grand extra that I wouldn't have had just by sending out emails saying, hey, we're gonna give this discount. We just basically bundled all the courses we had at the time Bundled them all together, gave like 55% off, and a bunch of people were buying them. And I would have never thought to have done that if it wasn't somebody else's uh, input. Me always putting myself around other business people, around people that have more experience than me. So that's just, I just want to get, that's such a key. Um, and this last year, Black Friday was the most sales we had ever done in, I think within a two week period, we did like $90,000 worth of sales. I mean, it was something insane. Um, now again, some of that was split with course, other course creators and different deals we have. But personally, I think I made $40,000 in like a week or two from Black Friday. So, and again, that was all from that person's recommendation and just being involved in these groups. So um, it's just, it's pretty incredible um, how you can go from nothing and struggling. And there was at one point where I was in Pat Flynn's group. I will talk about some more struggles too. I was in Pat Flynn's group. Um, sales were like going down. I think it was like an election year ads were getting really expensive, sales were going down. I was really relying heavily on that prep course for most of my income. There was more competition coming into the space. And I was like, oh man, and I, was, I was really stressed out. I had two weeks left of money in my bank account because I was paying money to the, the mastermind group. I had two weeks left, I'm like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. 
Um, I told my wife, I'm like, well, I better dust off the old resume. I was, I was very nervous. Um, but I was like, you know what? Let me figure it out. You just have to have like unwavering uh, delusional optimism in yourself sometimes. And so I was like, yeah, we'll figure it out. Um, I ended up doing a couple email promotions to my email list and some other stuff, generated enough money to give me another boost of cash, and we kept pushing forward, and it was just doing better and better and better. And then even in 20, end of 2019, um, I thought our numbers were worse than they were, um, but I was really discouraged for some reason because, you know, there was COVID, and our numbers were down, and I'm just like, I don't, I don't, this is, actually, it was 2020. I was like, this is really demoralizing. I don't know if I want to keep doing this or what should I do. And, uh, and again, kept pushing in the next year, I made way more money than I had before. So if you're feeling kind of like really excited and then really kind of bummed and you feel like you have this like roller coaster swing of emotions, that's really totally normal. Even if you start doing better, that's, that's really normal. Um, but it always really helped me to have someone else, uh, someone else there to kind of lean on for, um, support and encouragement and say, Hey, here's the path forward. Here's the road forward. Uh, if you want to get there. So, um, so that, that was, that's been pivotal in my life, and I've wanted to do something like this for a while, like teaching. I love teaching like this. I've um, kind of informally helped people over the years. There was someone, he was a former, he's a, an author, an illustrator of children's books and, you know, little novels and stuff. And he said, hey, I want to launch a course. He's been published with like, um, like Penguin Random House and like good big name publishers. Um, but, you know, I guess that doesn't make like a ton of money depending on what kind of book deal you get. So he was uh, talking to me as someone had connected us and he said, hey, David, I really want to launch an online course or a membership. I'm not sure how to go about it. Would you mind meeting me for lunch? So we had lunch. We talked for about two hours and I kind of said, hey, if I'm in your shoes, here's what I'm doing. Here's the strategies that I'm using. Here's kind of the path that I would take if I were you. And to his credit, he went and he executed. He got stuff together and he used this network instructional design distribution method where he went and he knew people in the industry already because you know he so he he was a little expert in his niche but he was trying to help people who wanted to get published by big publishing houses so he knew screenwriters and people at the publishing houses and he kind of leveraged some of his existing network already i had to kind of develop my network um and there's ways you do that through like having people on your podcast or just um, sometimes you just cold call people. Hey, can we chat or cold email them? Hey, can we chat? And they say, sure. Um, people are more willing to talk than you know. So uh, so he got 10 people together to agree to kind of do this like two month or three month long program on how someone can write a book and get published by like a big publishing house. And, um, and he launched it uh, and he pre-launched. He hadn't even actually created the content. He just recruited the people, laid out the the like outline of what he was going to be teaching and when, and he launched it. And he did uh, twenty thousand dollars in sales without. That was on his on his like first try. And we had met a few times, and again he was like struggling, like ah oh, man, I was hoping for this or hoping for this. And you know I gave him again more advice, and then he launched it, and I was like pumped because I'm like sweet. So. I want to see more and more of that, and I've, again, helped people off and on over the years, but I'm still full-time focused on Drone Launch Academy. Every day I'm in there, I'm running it, I'm trying to grow. We have plans for this year, we're going to be launching new things, so that takes up most of my time, 